Hello my friends, it's December by now, time for maybe the last video of the year. Um, and those of you who have seen some previous videos I have uh, done or already know, this is not a real birch forest. I'm not outside right now, it doesn't fit the time of the year either. Um, this is just a picture on the wall behind my sofa, because outside it looks more like that right now. So what I wanted to show you today is what I have actually done in those last months since March with the KTM 790 Adventure R that I bought then and maybe a little bit of a comparison to the Honda Africa Twin that I had before. So let's take a look. So as you might know I had and as I have said just right now I had an Africa Twin CRF 1000L before. Uh, so right away when I saw the um, KTM 790 Adventure and Adventure R at the, uh, at the presentation in Milano, I right away decided this is the bike I wanted, um, for several reasons which I will explain a little bit later. So this is how it looked in the beginning, and actually I got it 29th of March um, 2019 from a dealer in Kalmar called Alternative One Motorcycles. The very first contact I had with the bike was at the Stockholm Motorcycle Show when I first time saw it in real. This is of course the S model, but still I decided for the R model because I wanted to have this fully adjustable suspension. Even that it is a bit higher and for me, who is a short guy, not that easy to handle, but uh, you will never get an upgrade to what the R can do with the suspension for a reasonable amount of money. So the uh, 1000 euros you pay extra for the R model are very well worth the money, I think. When I picked up the bike in Kalmar, I right away did a two-day tour on the island of Öland uh, with really nice roads. It was still a bit early in the season, of course, so nothing was green there, but I had a lot of fun already there and right away was convinced that this is the right bike for me. Easter uh, in April I went then to Finland visiting some friends on the west coast and to my surprise there was still some snow in the forest but nothing that gave me really problems. So in May it finally gets green around here, what a relief, I really love that. So 1st of May I did the first long tour to Dalsland, the area on the Swedish side of the Swedish-Norwegian border far to the west where you still today find a lot of um, installations from First and Second World War, military installations which are not used any longer, like old bunkers um, and these kind of uh, stopping barriers for tanks. Um, quite interesting to see that and to explore a little bit around there. Also, I did of course some shorter weekend trips um, in the region of Bergslagen, the old mining area where you can find still traces of iron ore industry. And then uh, for the National Day, Swedish National Day, I went far north um, to uh, the National Park of Skulleskogen over the High Coast Bridge and wanted to ride up that mountain, but um, it didn't really work out the way I wanted. I should have taken the luggage off first. But still I had some nice um, almost off-road experiences with the 790, like here also on an old railway track. Almost a tradition has become a trip around midsummer into the city and an early morning uh, on a weekend, so on a Sunday morning most likely, then there are least people around there and I'm normally getting out there around 3 o'clock in the morning. You need to know sunrise is around 3.30, 4 o'clock then. Um, so then the city is t almost totally empty of people, almost no cars, you can stand in the middle of the roads and do pictures. And one tradition, uh, tradition I have by now is taking a picture of me the bike and Stockholm Stadsfus at the uh, city hall in the background. Then came summer, four weeks of vacation and the first real highlight uh, was uh, the Horizons Unlimited uh, mini travelers meeting, second time I organized this this year, um, where we had a few rideouts like this one on a mountain called Pilkalampinopi with a great view from the top. Of course, the biggest trip this year was coming then, which brought me far north. I was going through Sweden and Finland to a place called Grenze Jakobs Elf, which you see here in this picture, in the next one, this one, um, where Russia meets Norway. Yes, there's a little green red pole on the back on the back side of the on the far side of the riverbed. That is already Russia. I rode then further north to the uh, Barents Sea coast and followed that one. All the way, Meham was one interesting place to go and a few small villages up there on the coast. 
quite mixed weather as you see. Um, I had four degrees and rain also on the way to North Cape. It wasn't really that nice weather. I didn't do the hiking trip to uh, the uh, northernmost land point, but I finally came to North Cape. And for me, this wasn't a really must to see. It's more a touristy thing. I came for some hiking trips also and uh, the fantastic landscape up there. One thing I didn't want to miss definitely was the old postal road from Alta to Cautocano. And for that one, I had fantastic weather, as you can see. It was totally dry, which made the riding actually quite easy. You might ask why did I carry such a lot of luggage. I have the Moscow Moto R80 system on the back. Um, the green thing is the tent. It's a Hilleberg Steiker which is a very wind robust uh, tent which I really like also because it's freestanding. And you see there are some additional small bags on the sides of the tank which I improvised there with some straps. Those two bags, for example, are only containing hiking gear. So there are some boots inside, really sturdy mountain boots, uh, and another set of Gore-Tex clothing. Because I wanted to do some hiking up there. As you see, the landscape is really spectacular there. And I'm not the guy who's only riding, riding, riding. I also need to get a little bit of uh, physical activity in my trips. So why did I sell the Honda Africa Twin and get the KTM 790 Adventure R? Well, the Honda wasn't a bad bike, but it had been running over 40,000 kilometers when I sold it, so it was time to come to a decision if I wanted to have some resale value. So when KTM presented the 790 um, bikes, the R and the S model in Milano, and I saw these pictures in uh, the newspapers and the magazines, I right away decided this is a very interesting bike, and then the price came out, I decided, yeah, well, I'll go for it. I'll sell the Honda and get the KTM. Why? Because I wanted to have a little bit lighter bike, and I was convinced that what KTM is doing with the tank is exactly the right idea. Some people have been um, very skeptical, let's say it like that, about the uh, robustness of the tank, but if the tank is not robust, then what do you think about the uh, bulgy cylinder heads of a 1200TS, for example? Or, well, look at the tank of the F850JS. It's high up, all the fuel is high up. This cannot be good for the point of balance. Um, so I think KDM did it completely right with that design, putting the fuel low down, combining it with a light chassis and a reasonably powered engine. And yes, I have tested the tank. I have not really crashed the bike uh, while driving, so no speed involved. But I dropped it a few times. Um, it's a little bit annoying to admit that, but in the second week when I had it in the garage on the concrete floor, it was just leaning too far to the other side and I couldn't hold it. It slammed on the concrete floor. No damage done if, except a few scratches on the handguards. Uh, and even here where I had a little bit of speed and then came to a bad standstill and laid it down in the gravel, no damage done to the tank. Of course, if you are sliding on asphalt, this will be a different story. Almost at the same time that KTM showed the 790, some other bikes came on the market. Triumph showed the Scrambler, for example, which is a very beautiful bike. But for my purposes, I think the tank is too small and it has absolutely no wind protection, so it's not really the perfect travel bike. Yamaha Tenere 700 is, of course, promising to be a great bike for the price, for the money you pay. Um, and the first tests are really enthusiastic, um, but I doubt it will be beating the KDM when it comes to suspension and engine performance. Um, the numbers already indicate that and it's built to a price point. For sure, no, not a bad thing, um, but it's uh, generally cheaper components. As you know from previous videos, I have done a few modifications on my bike. Um, one is the low seat from the S model, which is one centimeter lower, gives me a little bit better ground contact. I have also removed the passenger handles on the back and installed an aluminum plate. This makes that the R80, Moscow Moto R80 is fitting a little bit better. I have the low front fender to produce less dirt spray on the front. Um, what else? I have some auxiliary um, headlights. There's a video about that uh, in my channel. And I have just ordered from Rade Garage the rally screen in the front, which I think looks a little bit nicer and will hopefully give me less turbulences on the helmet. And while I would call the Honda Africa Twin the all-road or maybe off-road capable uh, travel machine, um, endurance travel machine, they call it Reise Enduro in German, 
I would say the 790 is vice versa, a off-road, all-road machine that can also be used for long tours. Uh, and the tank is really um, the critical thing for that. I can do about 450 kilometers with one uh, tank of gas, which is really great. And since the weight distribution is so much easier to handle than the Honda Africa Twin, I'm doing a little bit more stuff, which I wouldn't dare really uh, to do at least that easily with uh, the Honda. So now you're of course asking any problems or troubles with the KDM and the simple answer is no, almost no. Only that screw that acts as a link for the side stand got loose and I almost lost it so I would have lost the side stand also which would have been a little bit annoying. But it always started, it never died, it always brought me where I wanted to go and I never needed to catch a train and put my head on the rails hoping there's coming one soon. So I'm really happy with my choice to go for the 790 Adventure R. The Honda wasn't a bad bike, um, but it had been, as I said, running 40,000 kilometers. So it was time to decide, do I want to keep it even longer and lose more value, or do I want to sell it now and get the KDM? You need to be aware that the engine characteristics of the two bikes are quite different. The Honda, are not quite different, a little bit different. The Honda actually has more power at low RPM. Um, you can really glide away there in the low gears. The KDM is not really happy below 3000 RPM, so you need to keep the gas up a little bit higher before you switch, and you might need to switch down a bit earlier in a lower gear. But I mean, come on, then the thing is really pure fun. Um, the reach of the Honda Africa Twin wasn't bad. I could get 350 kilometers out for sure. With the KDM, I can get out 450 kilometers. So, um, fantastic reach. That is, of course, if you use it for traveling, like I do, in a more steady and calm pace. If you ride it more aggressive, this number will, of course, go down and the fuel consumption will go up. Um, so I'm really happy with the KDM. I like that bike and I will keep it riding for uh, quite a few more seasons. Now there is a new kid on the block. Husqvarna has just uh, introduced a concept bike at the Milano 2019 show the Norden 901, which is basically building on the 790 chassis. I think it's probably one by one the same chassis, just the same trick they did with the 701 Enduro, which is basically the same bike, more or less the same bike as the 690 Enduro from KTM. Um, however, I'm not really convinced with what they did there. I mean, come on, when the 790 came out, everybody says, hooray, finally we got light adventure bike in the medium um, displacement class with a well-powered engine, 95 horsepower, uh, in a light chassis with a low tank, fantastic bike, and so far it's been basically the new gold standard in its category. Now what Husqvarna is doing, they adding weight actually. Just look at all the plastic, there's definitely more plastic, more weight on it, and we also have the crash bars there, which are, in my opinion, not really necessary, also adding weight to it. Um, and, oh, come on, I really do not like, but that's a personal opinion, I do not really like this round um, headlight, which reminds me very much of these little yellow guys, you know, from the cinema. Mm -hmm. You know which ones I mean. Um, we had a chance to do something unique. If they had taken, if Husqvarna had taken the 701 Enduro LR, the long range version, which didn't really cause a lot of press concern, um, press attention, um, and also giving it a, a front screen, that would have been something unique. They would have done, created something really unique, a very light, fully off-road capable, long distance travel bike, which no other manufacturer had in that quality class, in this performance class, in this weight class. Um, maybe the front fairing will be available as a, an extra, I don't know, but in my opinion, it should be there right from the factory. The other thing, um, my only point of critics about that 701 LR is that we made it even higher, but if you travel with it, if you do adventure traveling and even have luggage on it, which makes the bike a little bit top heavy maybe, you need to get at least one foot down. Um, look at my videos, there's one out there. I'm quite happy with one foot, I'm not talking about two feet, but you need to have at least one foot sufficiently down, also if you ride in city traffic, which you cannot avoid when traveling. So, we had a chance there, unfortunately we didn't do it, it's still an aftermarket job to build that bike. 
Okay, so much for today. Uh, quite a long video, quite a lot of talking for me. Sorry for not showing you anything outside, but um, the weather is really ugly right, right now outside and it's getting dark at 3 o'clock, so <laughs> hardly any chance to me, for me to do any filming. There in the corner, there are already some skis waiting, so I'm waiting now for the snow to come to do exploration by foot and by ski, backcountry skis. Um, first ride probably again next year in March, April, something like that. So please don't expect any more motor motorcycle related videos since then, maybe there's something else coming up. Enjoy the winter, it's a nice season also, even if it's without the bike, and it makes it even more um, keen on getting out and riding again next spring. See you then. Bye bye.